Philippians in chapter number 2. We're going to begin, we're going to begin our reading in verse number 16, and go through 18. Philippians 2, 16, the Bible says, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea, if I be offered upon the sacrifice of service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray as we come to this, your message this morning, dear God, that you would give me clarity of thought and mind as I preach. I pray that you would take and set me aside, fill me full of your spirit, give me unction and power from on high. May each and every person here be able to open their heart and mind up to your word, dear God, and to be able to learn some things about what your Bible says, dear God, and help us to have a, a new focus about our Christian life and our Christian walk, that we can go out with joy and joy unspeakable. And dear God, I pray that you just bless in all that's going to be said and done here this morning. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And amen. amen. One of the things you find missing most times in the people of God is joy. We are to enjoy the things of God. Now listen, I, I know that we have problems, we have trials and different things that we go through. But depending on how you look at those things will depend on how your Christian walk is going to go, whether you're going to have joy or not in your Christian walk. A Christian should have the joy of Christ by the way, He said He would give us at all times in our life. But too often sinfulness has robbed us of our joy that we should have. Disobedience robs us of the joy we should enjoy in Christ. Now if we think about what Paul has just said to the church of Philippi in these verses... And consider the fact that, listen, he doesn't know exactly what's going to happen in his life. In verse 23, if you look at it, it says, Him therefore I hope to sin presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. In other words, he's saying, I don't know what, how things are going to go with me. He's in prison. He's in Rome. He's coming down to the end of his life. But he doesn't know how things are going in his life. And considering that he doesn't know how things are going to go in his life, reconsider what we read as far as our text, holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ. That I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain, yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, he says, I joy. Listen, he's in prison. And he still has joy. And rejoice with you all. He's not sitting back having a pity party. Oh, always me. He's rejoicing in what's going on with the people of God outside of his area. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. He's saying that they are to be rejoicing and joying, listen, in his circumstance. Too many times in life, we allow circumstances to rob us of our joy. When we ought to just rejoice in them. And think and look at what Christ has done for us. But you know, we forget about that. Mm -hmm. we, we are, if I could say it this way, we're very nearsighted. Mm -hmm. 
We can't see beyond what's right in front of our face. And we don't think about what's beyond the front of our face. You see, even Paul through his trials rejoiced, as did the Old Testament characters or prophets rejoice. Habakkuk 3, verse 17 and 18, listen to what the Bible says. Although the fruit tree shall not blossom. Now the fig tree is a type of Israel. He's saying you're not going to blossom now. Neither shall fruit be in, their, in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail. The field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. Not very encouraging, huh? <laughs> Sounded like a very discouraging statement. But notice verse 18. He says, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Sort of sounds like what Paul's talking about. Even in the worst circumstances possible, I'm going to rejoice in the Lord of my salvation. I'm going to, or I will joy in the God of my salvation. All through the Bible we find God's will concerning joy, rejoicing, and happiness, and the results of these. In Nehemiah 8 and verse 10, the Bible says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For the day is holy unto our Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. It's our strength. Are you going around feeling spiritually weak? How's your joy? Has your joy in the Lord. According to the Bible, it is our strength. Maybe we ought to change our sour face into a joyful face. Yeah. Yeah. And we can rejoice through our circumstances. Proverbs chapter 15, verse number 13, the Bible says, A merry heart maketh a cheerful countenance, but a sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. Proverbs 17, verse 22, A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, Amen. but a broken spirit drieth the bones. Yes. Ecclesiastes 9, and verse number 7, the Bible says, Go thy way, eat thy bread with joy, and drink thy wine with a merry heart, for God now accepteth thy word. There's correlation between joy and your walk with God. A joy in things that you receive. Blessings in your life. I think we get the picture just a little bit of what joy and how we're to be in our Christian walk. But you know, too many times people endure the Christian life. People endure church. People endure, you're not going to like this one, the tithe. People endure things. But you know, everything we do for Christ should be with joy. The Bible says, the Lord loveth a cheerful giver. I, have you ever thought the opposite of that verse? Not somebody's holding it back. But if he loveth a cheerful giver, what does he think of a grudging giver? Everything in our life. Listen. There's people that endure fellowship. The Christian walk. <clears throat> They're just enduring. We need to get past enduring to enjoying. Mm -hmm. Enjoying 
church, enjoying preaching, enjoying singing, enjoying tithing, enjoying your Christian walk, enjoying everything about the Christian life. That's when you can find joy unspeakable. You see, it's all in how you perceive your events. The people in the Bible had the right attitude. A poor attitude stinks like a skunk. You know, your attitude can either be a, a, a nice smelling rose or it could be a skunk. Which would be more pleasing unto the Lord? You can use common sense and figure that out. So where does the Christian find joy? Where does the Christian find joy? Now, I'll be honest, we may be short. I've only got two points. You know where the next one goes. Where does the Christian find joy? The first thing, the Christian finds joy... In salvation, in Luke chapter 10, and verse number 20, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. Listen, we ought to have, if nothing else in this world as a child of God, we ought to have joy because our names are written in heaven. Amen. Man, the things that are coming about. You look at the world, you look at the things of the world and, and Israel and, and Islam and everything that's going on in the Middle East. You look at those things and, and, and you can't help but think the end of time is very near. Israel's close to uh, eliminating the uh, ultra-Orthodox Jew or trying to restrict them uh, from spending their time in their college and different things and and their time in prayer. I mean, you think about it, I mentioned it the other day. A woman actually said, listen, <clears throat> pray if you want to, but don't pray on my dime. Your prayers aren't helping anyway. Mm -hmm. wow. A Jew said that about the ultra-Orthodox Jews. Because they're trying to get the ultra-Orthodox, which is... In a layman's term, they're not Levites by birth, but they're acting as the Levites should be doing. They're the people that is praying to God. They're the people that is attending to God in Israel. And the nation as a whole say, we don't want you doing that anymore. We want you going to war with us. We want you working and supporting yourself. Remember the Old Testament? The 11 tribes supported the Levites. And right now, Israel, the whole, is supporting the ultra-Orthodox so they can study and spend their time in prayer and everything and doing the things of God. And they're saying, we don't want you doing that anymore. You come and do with us. Support your own self. Listen. All those things, to me, if they're doing away with it, Listen, Israel's cutting its last length with God. Yeah. If they do that, could the rapture be closer than what we thought? That's right. Or what we think? Oh yeah, we, we get up in the morning and we say, Oh Lord Jesus, are you coming? But do we live like we really believe it? It's easy to say, hey, God can come tonight. But do you really think that way? You see, we should have joy in our salvation. We should rejoice in the fact, if nothing else, we skip the tribulation. Praise God. Amen. I, I, I know there's a, all uh, mid-trippers and, and no-trip people or all-trip people. Listen. If they want to stay here and go through it, more power to them. You know, I, I wish Christ, I know He's not going to do this. I know He can't change. And the Bible says all the Christians are going to be taken out in a moment, twinkling in an eye. We're all going to meet Him in the cloud. We all know that. Good thing I'm not God. Because all those people
people wants to believe that mid-trib and, and no trip or all trib stuff, I just leave them down here and say, well, you wanted to go through it. So I figured I'd leave you down there and let you go through it. <laughs> Praise God I'm not Christ, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be sitting up here. Listen, the Bible said right here that you wasn't going to go through it, but you rejected it. So I thought maybe you just wanted to go through it. But no, man, we ought to rejoice in that. Rejoice in the God of our salvation. Christian joy is also found in the Savior in 1 Peter 1 8. The Bible says, Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Not just in our salvation, but in the God of our salvation. Listen. To think about it. A Savior who stepped off the throne of glory made Himself of no reputation took upon Himself the form of a man that he could come to this earth and to live and to die and to rise again for you and I. Yes. Who goes back to heaven to prepare a place for us. Amen. Who's there interceding for us every single day and sometimes every moment of the day. Amen. At night. <laughs> to think about that. Who else do we have like that? No one. No one. Does your spouse or your family member pray for you every second of the day? No. They're not as close to you as Christ. We ought to joy in the fact that He's always there. Always there waiting. The Christ of our salvation. Christian joy is found in, and listen, in security. I mean, you think about it. Romans 8, 38, 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature is able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing can separate us from Christ. I can't imagine these Armenian people going around thinking that you can lose your salvation. What joy is in that? Mm -mm. How can you have the joy of Christ worrying about, did I lose it today? Did I forget to ask forgiveness for something? And that's what they believe. You talk to them. You find someone that's serious about it. Ask them. And if you got mad at me and said awful things to me, turned around and walked out and got hit by a car, and never got that thing right, would you die and go to hell? Yes, they would say. I've had many of them tell me that. Man, I, I talked to a man, it's been a couple years ago, here in West, who had a, a child who had gotten away from God. And he's all concerned. Not about his own salvation, but because it, they had made a profession of faith and left Christ. Got out of church and stuff. Because now he thinks she's lost. I don't know. She may
may be, but she, if she is, she was never saved to begin with. And I sat there, listen, I sat there in giving scripture after scripture about eternal security. About you not being able to pluck yourself out of Christ's hands. And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he still walked away believing. You could lose your salvation. Religion sucks the life out of you. Amen. Yeah. What joy is it? Listen. I have an eternal home. Notice I said, I have. Amen. Yep. Amen. It's not I will have. I, it's a present possession. It's a deed that no bank can come back and foreclose on. Listen, it's sealed. It's delivered. Rejoice in that. Yes. Rejoice in security. Christian joy is also found in the sanctuary. Psalm 42 and verse 4, it says, When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voices of joy and praise. With a multitude that kept holy day. Listen. We ought to come to the house of God rejoicing that we can come and worship a holy God. Listen, that we can have access to Him. That we don't have to go through no priest. We don't have to go through no individuals. We can come and rejoice to the Lord and know, listen, in, even in a multitude of people rejoicing, Christ hears you. Man, they, they come to church. The, the song says, man, I come to the house of God rejoicing, praising God. So how many times you come to church Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. <laughs> you know it's true. Dead, dead. Where's your joy? Man, it ought to be amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I can't hit those high notes. Sorry. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the Bible says, "Make a joyful noise unto the Lord." Didn't say pretty noise. Because if it's said pretty noise, no one can say. Amen. <laughs> Our joy should be found in the sanctuary. Our joy is found in the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Nehemiah 8, verse number 12, the Bible says that all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make a great mirth because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. That word mirth, it mo means more than just joy and enth or, uh, rejoicing. It means with noise. In other words, there is rejoicing with enthusiasm. It goes beyond just the joy of it. And, and Nehemiah says, listen, they, they went to make a, not just a mirth, not rejoicing with enthusiasm, but great rejoicing with enthusiasm. Because they understood the words that was declared unto them. Man, when you get into the Bible, I'm talking when you dig into it, not, not just to sit down, okay, I'm going to read my chapter today and, and be done. But when you Envelop yourself into the Word of God. Mm. Praying, asking God, show me something. Give me something today. 
And then God answers that prayer. Gives you exactly what you was wanting. And you see it and you're like, Wow! I didn't ever see that before. Praise God! Listen, there ought to be great mirth in that. Great rejoicing with enthusiasm. Because God is faithful. God is true. I mean, Rick Hall ought to be ready to dance a jig here. She got up this morning asking God, she told on herself before Sunday school, asking God, God, show me my joy, show me where I need it. And I'm sitting here laughing. <laughs> because the sermon this morning is on Christian joy. You get up and you ask for it and God gives it to you. You ought to rejoice with great joy in that. Amen. Amen. Listen, I hadn't talked to her in a couple of days. But that's the God we serve. Yes. God knew what she was wanting this morning before she ever asked for it. Amen. Yes. And answered it. It's true. Listen, when you get up and you dive into the Word of God, searching for something, God knows before you start your search what you're wanting, and when He shows it to you, listen, He takes great joy in showing to someone who sincerely wants to know. Having great joy. Christian joy is found in service. Acts 20 and verse number 24. The Bible says, But none of these things move me, neither I count my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus Christ to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Paul says, listen, my service, it doesn't matter what entails my service. He says, none of these things move me. None of the things that he went through moved him. He said, even through all of that, I want to finish my course with joy. Amen. You know, it's a joy to serve God. Yes. Amen. It's a joy to be able to do even the little things for God. You know, too many people want to be the big fish. They come into the pond, clean the bathrooms, sweep the floor. Pastor, isn't there something more I can do? Can I teach? Can I be out in front? That's not serving God. The way God wants you to serve Him. See, a person ought to rejoice in no matter what God asks you to do. Paul, you're going to get stoned. Praise the Lord, I get to suffer for Christ. Paul, you're going to get whipped twice. Thirty-nine times. Praise God. I get to tell them about Jesus before I do it, though. <laughs> Paul, you're going to be thrown in prison. Hey, listen. There's no cots in their prisons. There's no cable TV, Nintendo, or PlayStation. Amen. There's no hot cooked meals. Mostly just bread and water back then. Praise God that I'll get to go in front of Agrippa and preach to him. <clears throat> Paul, you're going to be shipwrecked. You're going to land on some island named Miletus. You're going to be bitten by a snake. Praise God that I'll get a witness to everybody on that island. Amen. You see, it's not about how you're servicing or what you're doing in serving God. It's 
how you start with God. That's right. How you approach it. We ought to have joy in no matter what we're doing. Listen, hey, praise God. I get to serve a living God. I get to serve the Christ who died for me. I get to serve my Savior. Amen. Amen. Yes. There is joy. Mm -hmm. And then Christian joy is found in surety. In John 14 and verse 2 and 3. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go I, and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Amen. There's surety in that. There's no doubt. And we ought to enjoy in that. Now listen. Point two. What joy does for the Christian? You see, the reason most people fail in their Christian walk is because they do not have joy. You see, we ought to have all the joy in all these things. And if we have those things right and have joy in those, it's going to change our life. Amen. Amen. You see, joy changes duty into delight. Mm. 1 Thessalonians 2, 18 and 20. Wherefore, we would have come unto you, even I call, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at His coming? For ye are our glory and joy. Amen. You see, His duty, His service to God, it changed into His delight. He rejoiced because Satan was hindering Him. Most times when Satan starts buffeting us and hindering us, Pastor, you just don't know what I've been through today. Oh, I praise God I made it. Oh, Lord. Pastor, man, Satan tried to hinder me this morning. We ought to be like little Will. <laughs> yep. Amen. 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 Yep. Little Willie Amen. was a young, mentally handicapped young man down in Atlanta, Georgia. He got saved, or no, he got uh, invited to come to church on the church bus. And uh, he promised the bus driver he was going to be there without fail. And I forget the brother's name, but. He had pulled up to the little Willie's house, started honking the horn of the bus. No Willie. No Willie. Just directly, he's about to put it in gear, take off. And he said, behind the house come little Willie. Running full steam. And he ran and jumped up on the bus and he said he, he said he had to quickly throw the door open because he'd already slapped, slapped through the door. Got up on the bus. And started hollering out <clears throat> this gentleman's name, brother, whatever. He said, you know what happened to me this morning? He said, no, Willie, what happened to you this morning? He said, when I got up, you know who was sitting at the end of my bed? He said, no, Willie, who was sitting at the end of your bed? He said, Satan was sitting at the end of my bed. And he said, you know what he told me? He said, no, Willie, what did he tell you? He said, Satan said, Willie... You're not going to church this morning. And he said, you know what I told him? He said, no, Willie, what did you tell him? Or what, what, I, what I did? He said, no, Willie, what did you do? He said, I waited until he turned his head and I jumped out the window. That's what I did. <laughs> hey, what we need to do when Satan comes and attacks us, we need to wait until he turns his head and jump out the window. Amen. Have some 
joy. Praise God I got the victory over the flesh this morning. Amen. And did what God wanted me to do. Yep. It turns duty into life. To delight. It, joy changes persecution into privileges. Amen. The Bible says in Acts 5, 40, verse 40 to 42, And to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beat them, they commanded that they should speak or should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. The apostles, when they were persecuted, they rejoiced in the privilege they have to suffer for Christ. You see, when you have joy in your life, people are no longer persecuting you, but you are suffering for Christ's name. It turns persecutions into a privilege. Joy also changes burdens into blessings. Philippians 1 Verses 12 through 14, the Bible says, But I would ye should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel, so that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. And many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident in my bonds are much more bold to speak the word without fear. You see, Paul's, of course, he's writing to the church of Philippi. He was in prison. He was talking about the burdens of his sufferings and everything. And he said, listen, this all worked out to the furtherance of the gospel. Listen, the king's palace in which I'm at, Everyone in here has heard the gospel. Amen. If I wouldn't have been put in prison, it wouldn't have happened. Amen. He went before Caesar who heard. Remember, he told me, he said, I must go before Caesar. When he was back in Jerusalem, they said, or going to Jerusalem, and they told him, no, you don't want to go to Jerusalem. They're looking to kill you. And he said, I must go because I must go to Caesar. He knew his path to Rome was through Jerusalem. That burden. Can you imagine walking all the way back to Jerusalem knowing you're going to be in prison, knowing you're eventually going to be sent to Rome and your freedom is going to be mostly taken away. Now God didn't give him some freedom and blessing within the prison. Just as he did with Joseph, by the way. But he said all of this in the palace, in every other place, the gospel's been heard. Through the stonings, through the whippings, through the shipwrecks, through all my runnings, the gospel's been heard. You see, God can take a burden and change that burden into a blessing. That's why the Bible says all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His purpose. It all depends on how you look at it. You see, all of this is a result of your joy. See, your joy takes your duty and turns it into delight, your persecution into privilege, your burdens into blessing. And it also takes your trials and turns them into trials. Mm. In James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, the Bible says, My brother, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptations, knowing this, that your, 
that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Wanting nothing. That's the blessing in it. You go from trials to triumphs. Trials to victories. Hey, think of Job. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. You think of the trials that he went through. You think of the triumph he had in the end. You think of the Trials Paul went through. You think of the triumph he had in the end. He was able to say before he died that all the known world had heard the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that little thing called the judgment seat of Christ? Yeah. Where you receive your crowns or something yeah. lost? If Paul's first in line, you don't grab a snippet, you grab a box. You never seen the commercial? It's going to be there a while? Snap open the snickers? You don't, if Paul's first in line, you don't grab one snickers, you get a box of them. Because you're going to be there for a while. You think of all the blessings all the triumphs he had through all his triumphs. Think of Joseph. Joseph, what dreams have you had? Oh man, I, I dreamed that all my brothers paid homage unto me. I, I, I guess God's wanting me to be in some type of leadership role. dream. The sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to him. Joseph, what are you doing in the pit? God, I, I, I thought I was supposed to be over them. They threw me down in the earth. Oh, they're going to bring me out again. Oh, praise the Lord. You're selling me to slavery? Oh, Lord, I, I'm not even with my family anymore. Where am I going? Where, what, what's going to happen to me? I'm going to be in Potiphar's house. Well, God, I'm just going to follow you. Rises to a little prominence in Potiphar's house. <laughs> what did she say I did? How can I do such a thing and sin against God? You're going to send me where? I'm innocent. Prison? Are you for real? No, we got to have a little today's life. Now I'm over the kingdom. I'm over everything. God took his trials and turned them into triumphs. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he always trusted in God and rejoiced in God. Yeah. I listen, when he was in prison, I think he still had the joy of the Lord. When he was in Potiphar's house, I thought I believe he still had the joy of the Lord. He rejoiced in his circumstances. God elevated him. Gave him the victories. You see, too many times in our Christian life, we let the duty, the persecution, the burdens, and the trials bring us down. Why? Because we do not enjoy in God the way we should. We don't rejoice in our salvation. We don't joy in our Savior. 
We don't joy in our service. We don't joy in our situations. We don't joy in our security or the sanctuary or the scripture. And because we're not rejoicing in those areas, when the duty and persecution, burdens and trials come, we fall flat on our faces. Amen. we got to be like David. Encourage ourselves in the Lord. Rejoice in the God of our salvation. We do that, we'll get the victories and the duty. We'll get, or we'll get the delight in the duty. We'll get the privilege in the persecution. We'll get the blessings and the burdens. We'll get the triumphs and the trials. What do you want in your Christian life? The Bible's clear. Christ has left us His joy. But do we really want it? Amen. I'm not talking lip service. Do we really want it? The Christian's joy. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word and, and what it does in our life, dear God. And I pray, dear God, that you would just take these few words this morning and burn it into our hearts. Help us to be able to rejoice in you in, in all things. Help us to glory in you. Dear God, I pray as we come to this time of invitation that we'd be able to look at ourselves honestly. And dear God, make decisions that will reflect the rest of our lives. Of course, in Christ's name we pray. Mm -hmm. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. Have you been struggling in your Christian life with joy? Things seem to be burdening you down and dragging you down. Maybe you just need to rediscover the joy in your salvation, in your Savior, in your security, in the sanctuary and in the scriptures, in service to God. Rediscover the purpose of your Christian life. For anyone here say, Pastor, listen, I needed this this morning. Mm -hmm. You slip your hand up and you say, oh, please pray for me. Bless those hands. In a second, we're going to take our hymn, stand. I'll pray for those. Then we're going to sing number 288. I want you to listen to these words. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are known, these have a lure in my sight. This morning, will you make that commitment to God? Resolve to have joy in your life. Resolve. Mm -hmm. To have joy in your Savior. Everything we look at this morning. Take those duties, change them into the lights. Take those persecutions and turn them into privileges. Take those trials and turn them into triumphs. And turn your Christian life around. Stand your feet. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are honest this morning to raise their hand to God. I pray that by that acknowledgement that you would begin to work in their heart and life. May each and every person really search their heart and, and see the, the joy that we can have in Christ Jesus. See the joy that we can have in you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, help us to be able to push forward from this time and to make a great difference, not only in 
our individual lives, but in the lives of those around us. Help us to be like Paul, who had joy through everything, and, and there was great blessings because of the burdens that he went through. Dear God, that we could see multitudes saved like he did. I pray, dear God, that you just take and work in our heart this morning. For it's in Christ's name we pray. And amen. Turn to number 288.